Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're using the Unity engine, you probably want to open up the Unity Hub right now and check something out. There is a new release today, Unity 6 Preview, also known as 6000.0.0F1. Now, there's actually been a bit of a naming convention change with the way Unity do things, and this you can think of as quite literally the last version of Unity before we get to Unity 6, and that means this is the last version of Unity that does not have the runtime fee attached. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty much just a release candidate. You can think of it that way. This is a feature complete version of it. There's just going to be bug fixes from this point on. I'm going to showcase a couple of features in the Unity 6 preview, and then we'll move on to the release notes. So uh, one of the things that you've got now, uh, there's been a lot of improvements on the VFX graph side of things with Unity 6. Uh, so there is this new demo available, kind of uh, walks you through how you can use VFX graphs. You've also got uh, new um, debugging information available as well. So if we head on over here, you can actually get a bit more detail. You can drag down into and go to the profiler uh, for it. Also, at the same time, you can dig into the uh, rendering debugger and get a bunch of details about uh, your VFX graphs. This is available for both HDRP and Universal Render Pipeline. You are seeing the Universal Render Pipeline example at this point in time. Uh, so this kind of walks you through what uh, render graph is capable of for VFX effects. Uh, if you want to go ahead and check this guy out, it's pretty simple. So what you want to do is head on over to uh, Window, Package Manager, go here to the list and go, oh, sorry, actually they move things. So go to Unity Registry, Visual Effects Graph right there, and then you will find that it's available in samples. Just go ahead and download the learning version right there. Uh, so a lot of the other changes here are actually behind the hood. So here you can see this is the ERP samples that were released back at GDC. Uh, there's three sets of samples here. This is the garden scene, kind of illustrating what the URP is capable of. Uh, the URP is getting more and more capabilities, to be honest. I, I honestly think the HDRP days are numbered, but but that is purely my opinion. Now, one of the new things that we've got here is adaptive probe volumes. This is basically a simpler way of doing global illumination probes in your world. You can see they're available over here. You can set up how the placement works. So you can set them to do single scene or baking set. Uh, you can set how they placed in the world and so on. And then under your render debugger, you can see them this way. So I've set it up. Uh, you have to basically uh, turn it on for each item in the game world as well. So I, I'm not showcasing that. But what you can see here is I can show the probes that are generated by the adaptive volume like so. So it automatically fills in all of these uh, light probes for you in your scene. Uh, and then you can also have it show the cells and the bricks uh, that are created for said probes. And then as you see, if you make changes to the probe, you will see the changes here. So this is the new uh, lighting system in place. Another thing that's here that I really can't show you because there's not much to show here uh, is the GPU resident drawer. So what you can actually do now is turn this on for instance drawing. Uh, this should just basically be a free speed feature. This is definitely one of the uh, most exciting new features in Unity 6. It doesn't really, uh, not that exciting, uh, that was really it, but basically uh, for all of the static meshes in your scene, theoretically they should be faster. Now you will see there are some conditions to getting this all set up and going. So you do need to be using forward plus rendering for this to work. Um, so that is definitely one of the new features. More or less, it is called free speed. Uh, so I always like features like that. So here we are in the Unity 6 Preview announcement blog. Uh, let's do a quick run through of what is here. So this one, Unity 6 Preview, used to be known as 2023.3 TechStream. They rebranded it. So again, what you want to think of Unity Preview as this is the feature complete version that they're doing hardening and bug fixings, etc. on. So this should be the last release before we get Unity uh, 6, which again is the version with the runtime fee. So uh, what do we expect here? Well, definitely uh, boosting to uh, rendering performance is always nice. Uh, part of this is the GPU resident drawer. I showed you how you can, drawer, I always wanna call it drawer, the same spelling, English sucks. Uh, but you basically see GPU resident drawer allows you to efficiently render large, richer worlds without the need for complicated manual optimization. Optimize your scenes with up to 50% uh, CPU frame time reductions for game objects when rendering large, complex scenes across platforms, including high-end mobile, PC, and console. So again, you just basically turn it on to instance drawing. Uh, you can turn on a GPU occlusion calling there as well. I believe that is also a new feature. Yeah, so here, uh, GPU occlusion calling boasts the performance of game objects by reducing the amount of overdraw for each frame, which means the renderer is not wasting uh, resources. Now, this won't work on instance mesh. This is just for uh, static meshes in the scenes. Now, another thing that they've added here is spatial temporal post-processing. 
Now you can basically think of this as Unity's version of like NVIDIA's DLSS or AMD's FSR. It is basically a way of uh, rendering at a lower resolution and then upscaling it. Uh, so you basically can get higher frame rates, but you can scale up to like a 4K kind of display look here. Uh, RenderGraph for ERP uh, is a new rendering framework and API simplifies the maintenance and extensibility of the render pipeline, improves rendering efficiency and performance. New system introduces various key optimizations such as automatic merging and creation of native render passes in order to reduce memory bandwidth use along with energy consumption, especially on tile-based mobile GPUs. A new RenderGraph API also streamlines the creation, the custom pass injection workflow, allowing you to extend the render pipeline with your own custom raster and custom passes. Again, I, I have this vibe that uh, URP is going to be the one true pipeline going forward, but that's again, just my guess. Uh, so there's also the new render graph viewer. You can analyze the engine's uh, render pass creation, frame time, etc. cetera. Uh, so we also have foveated rendering API in there. So foveated rendering basically is uh, focusing more on the pixels at the middle of the display and less so on the outside edges. You can see a pretty drastic example of foveated rendering here. Uh, you can improve frame rates by basically focusing on the part that the eyes are looking at. Uh, this would be used only and quite literally only in VR headsets. You would never do this on a desktop, but it basically with the way that eyes work on uh, rendering for VR or XR, foveated rendering can make a lot of sense. So it is available there. Now the API works with uh, PlayStation VR, MetaQuest, uh, and uh, OpenXR plugin is coming soon. Uh, volume framework enhancements in both HDRP and ERP uh, optimize CPU performance on all platforms to make it viable even on low-end hardware. And actually, there's quite a few things in this release that I do like just on the level of they're just quality of life improvements. So uh, GPU occlusion culling, uh, the, um, the render drawer, and so on. These are things you basically just turn on and hopefully things just work faster. Now, the one I previewed very earlier on there is the adaptive probe volumes. So it's a new way to build global illumination. It just basically makes it a lot easier to set up your light probes. Uh, so you could also have uh, APV or adaptive probe volume scenario blending. Uh, so you can use this to do things like day to night transitions. You can see here as an example. And you're gonna see they're switching between dawn, sunrise, morning, and so on. And you can see the different uh, lighting effects that you'll get out of that. So now we are into morning noon, afternoon, and so on. So we could jump forward a bit and here you're seeing into night. So that is a, one of the features that this new functionality buys you. Uh, so that's the scenario blending. Uh, that is, again, for the universal render pipeline. You're noticing a trend here. Uh, we also have sky occlusion, supported for URP and HDRP, enables you to apply time of day lighting scenarios to your virtual environments and achieve more color variation in static indirect lighting from the sky compared to uh, the scenario blending. Uh, we've got disk streaming supports non-compute path in universal render pipeline. We've enabled for asset bundles and addressables. Uh, leverage the probe adjustment volumes tool to fine tune your APV content and light leaking solutions. Uh, we also have improvements to the um, fidelity of the environments. So here, for example, you can see atmosphere scattering. So sky uh, scattering on and then off. Let's do that one more time so you can see the off. So no scattering, scattering on. I also have new settings for ozone as well. well. The water system also got an update that now supports underwater volumetric fog. So you can do like light shafts, etc. underwater. Uh, and then VFX, we've got some improvements there. You got the graph profiling tool there. Uh, the new uh, VFX shaders with support of the shader graph keywords and more complex effects with the universal render pipeline with universal render pipeline depth and color buffers. And then we've got that new learning template that we checked out a little bit earlier on. Uh, improvements to the shader graph artist workflow, including new keyboard shortcuts, uh, heat map color mode to identify the areas where uh, the GPU is using uh, the most intensively in the shader graph. Uh, we also have access to the new node reference samples, a set of shader graph assets where each graph is description of one node breakdown of how the math works under the hood. So if you want to learn how to use shader graphs, that sample is available out there as well. We've also got a number of platform improvements as well. So uh, quality of life there, new build profiles, features uh, managing builds will be more efficient uh, with a higher degree of flexibility than ever before, as well as configuring build settings in each profile. You can now include different scene lists to customize the content of your builds, creating multiple unique playable demos for your game with the scenes you want to share the most. Additionally, you can set up custom scripting defines for any profile, which are additive over those found in the player settings to allow for uh, fine tuning of features and behaviors of both builds and uh, editor play modes. 
Uh, we also now have the new platform browser uh, to enhance platform discovery inside the editor. Platform browser is a place where you can discover all those platforms for Unity Sports and create build profiles for the ones you choose. So it's a bit of an update to the platform. This used to be uh, a separate screen there. Uh, expand to mobile gaming reach with web runtimes. Uh, so this is actually kind of cool. So the browser support on Android um, and iOS browsers was arrived with Unity 6 preview. Uh, so it has web GPU, but we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, so if you want to embed your game in a web view in a native app or use a progressive web app template to make your game behave more like a native app with its own shortcuts and offline functionality, uh, with more bells and whistles such as mobile device compass support and GPS location tracking, your web games will be able to react to wherever your game chooses to play. Uh, so if you are working on web games, mobile is uh, a more viable option right now. And as I mentioned earlier on, like about 17 seconds ago, uh, there is now early access to the web GPU backend as well. Uh, so this is experimental support for web GPU uh, and paving the way for future leaps coming to graphic rendering fidelity for Unity web games. Uh, web GPU is designed with the goal of harnessing and exposing modern GPU capabilities such as compute shader support to the web. Uh, it is implemented internally via native GPU such as DirectX 12, Vulkan, or metal, obviously, depending on what platform you're working on. Uh, this one is very niche, uh, but the Unity editor now supports ARM-based Windows devices. That is literally the editor itself, as well as as a target. So if you want to run Unity natively on an ARM device, such as if you're getting that new um, Snapdragon X-powered um, Surface device, uh, you can actually now run the Unity editor natively on ARM uh, devices. I don't know that there's a lot of ARM devices out there yet, but if you're using ARM, you will like that. We also have some rendering back and improvements. DirectX 12 uh, is fully production ready now uh, and available for use when targeting DirectX capable Windows platforms. Uh, DirectX 12, Unity editors, players can benefit from significant improvements to CPU performance by using split graphics jobs. Performance gains are expected to scale uh, based on scene complexity. Uh, so you can see the, the rendering difference there uh, between them. And then obviously not a huge jump in performance from between DirectX 11 and 12, but this split GFX jobs you're seeing was at 15% uh, jump there as well. Although uh, not split is actually slower. So interestingly enough. Uh, and then they also have support for the GDK packages. This is Microsoft's SDK for doing a lot of their common back end things such as user identity, player data, social cloud storage, and more. Uh, so if you want to hook into that stuff, you can now do so via the Microsoft GDK API. Uh, improvements in XR. Um, so the support of the most popular platforms, including ARKit, ARCore, Vision OS, MetaQuest, PlayStation VR, Windows Mixed Reality, and more. More, although I do believe that uh, Windows Mixed Reality is now dead as a doornail. Uh, but yeah, that's an aspect of it. Uh, so we also have some improvements there. So added support for image stabilization on AR Core, as well as improved support for mixed reality platforms like the MetaQuest, uh, including features like meshing and bounding boxes. Uh, improvements to the input for XR handling, unique hand gesture support has been added in there as well via the XR hands package. So you can do custom hand gesturing. It's obviously going to be much more important on the newest Apple devices, which are ent entirely controlled that way. Uh, we've got improvements to the visual fidelity via a feature called composition layers. This is a, an experimental package for things like rendering text to video UI and images at a much higher quality using native support for the runtime's comp compositor layer, enabling clearer text, sharper outlines, and so on. Uh, we've got experimental multiplayer center. It's kind of a, like a one-stop hub for like um, setting up, configuring, and learning about Unity's various different online offerings for multiplayer stuff. Uh, multiplayer play mode. This is actually kind of neat. So it, it's going to make it so that you can run multiple different versions of your game locally on your PC. Should make testing uh, your games quite a bit easier. A number of other multiplayer tools in here as well. Experimental distributed authority for netcode for game objects has been added. Uh, netcode for entities was improved with support for game objects to render debug bounding box. It also added to the netcode config scriptable object, which contains most netcode configuration variables. Uh, and then we've got uh, more improvements again for multiplayer stuff coming soon. Uh, entity workflows have had some improvements. So Unity 6 preview streamlines the entity component system workflow, resolves common pain points. Part of the effort, we changed the way entities are stored in preparation for a future consolidation of entities and game work object workflows. Again, I find this interesting as well. So I think with entities, they just found that they alienated so much of their game objects uh, 
a user base that they're now making it just so that you can keep using game objects workflow, but you can kind of entitize part of it and take advantage of their tools. Uh, so entity IDs are now globally unique and you can now move them officially from uh, entity world to another. Does not impact ECS workflow, but it, it does disambiguate debugging by always showing exact entities. Um, and then uh, deliver runtime experiences with AI. I covered AI elsewhere. I didn't really cover Scent as much. This used to be called Barracuda. It's a way for running like neural network models inside of your game, uh, but they've done improvements to the performance things there as well. Um, and there is memory profiler, uh, major updates when it comes to memory profile. First, graphics memory was previously uncategorized in now measured and reported per resource. Second, reporting of resident memory is more precise. For example, memory that is swapped to disk is no longer counted towards this. So definite improvements to the uh, profiler. And that's about it. Uh, so there's where we're at. Now, one thing you're going to want to be very, very aware of is this word right here. Now, I told you this is the last release before the much-loved runtime fee comes into effect. So let me read this paragraph to you word for word. Unity 6 Preview is most suitable for testing during pre-production discovery and prototyping phases of your development process. However, for any code functionality or fixes from Unity 6 version are incorporated in a live game, it may be subject to the applicable runtime fees if the game is updated to Unity 6 in general availability. General availability availability will be the next version. So even uh, so you could actually technically develop a game using preview. It's not supposed to be used for production, but you can, and you will avoid the runtime fee. Just know that if you start mixing in any code from Unity 6 or beyond, so from the next release or beyond, you could be subject to the runtime fee. And the runtime fee is this. I'm not going to get back into this, but basically if your revenue exceeds over $200,000 uh, and well, depending on what version you're using. So if you're using personal and you make over $200,000 or if you're using pro and you make over a million dollars or if you're using enterprise, actually it's the exact same as pro, uh, the runtime fee will apply to you uh, and you can figure out exactly how much by plugging it into the calculator here. Uh, the runtime fee does not exceed two and a half percent of your monthly revenue. So just be aware that basically there is now a royalty attached to Unity 6 versions beyond this one. Not technically preview, but every release I cover hereafter, this will be applied to it. Just one of those things to be aware of. And by the way, if you're interested, the learning template for that uh, VFX stuff is all available there. I showed you how you can go ahead and grab that uh, in my earlier video. So ladies and gentlemen, earlier in this video, I meant to say, so that ladies and gentlemen is the Unity 6 preview now available. This is the last release before Unity 6 comes to us, and that is probably the most important release in the history of Unity. Now, there's definitely some nice things in here. I like anything that just basically gives you more performance, things that are focused towards the developer. Um, yeah, that's it. So let me know what you think in Unity 6. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.